I've used this analogy before when talking about the G&G combat machines, but picture that Crytek M4s are Honda Civics for a moment. The Crytek PDWs can be comparable to the Civic hatch, while something like the SPRs and CRVs are more standard models of Honda Civic. They're reliable, trusted, parts are everywhere, they're pushed a lot by many websites, and their owners will tell you a lot about them. And they'll also challenge anyone who enters their area with something that's not one of them. Then if you want to go further into this, the LVOAs can be Civic Type Rs. A lot of people love them, they can have power, yes, but their fan bases can get a little out of hand and can be a little bit deaf to anything less than full praise because... Crytax... are perfect. No, you're fucking not. So what would something like a Honda NSX be? Welcome to the Crytac Vector AEG. This review should have been out months ago! I know this gun right here is one of the most requested guns I've ever had, and I understand why. The Chris Vector has a massive fan base, including myself. I love to get one of these with a tan lower and a black upper, so I can build an old setup that I used in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. This is still one of the most hyped guns in Airsoft, even though it's been out already for a while. You can actually buy one of these right now on Airsoft GI's website for about $450. And despite that price teetering on the line of average Airsofters budget, they still sell very well. However, every gun has its pros and cons, and I'm here to go over a few of them in this review while also including a few quotes from a few people who I've talked to in regards to the Crytac Vector. Airsoft GI will be this review's sponsor, which is where you can order one of these unique AEGs with the links I provided in the description down below. So if you end up liking this gun after my review, then please be sure to check them out there. Now with that said, let's get into this, where we always begin with the unboxing. This unsurprisingly starts off with the same box that we saw with the PDW that we went over a couple weeks ago, with a hard to miss graphic covered cardboard box. Opening the lid, we can see that all the paperwork is taped to the inside of the lid. This paperwork includes a nice sticker of Crytax logo, a warranty information card, and a nicely detailed manual. This manual shows you how to work the controls, how to adjust your hop up, load your included mid cap magazine, and how to even break the vector down for maintenance, so I give this manual a big thumbs up. Moving along now, under this sheet of foam, we can see where the vector would sit, but as you can see, I just took it out. But we do have a small metal rail that can be added to the vector's body. Then we have a 95 round Chris trademark mid cap magazine wrapped in plastic, like just about everything else in here. And then finally, we have an average cleaning slash jamming rod and the black metal flash hider that should be included in this box, but for some reason it's not in here. So now with the Vector AEG out on display and people in the GI Tactical store in Plano, Texas looking over here at what I'm doing, I can point out what makes this gun so special apart from the apparent looks. Well, of course, this is Crytac's first stray away from M4s, and what a good way to start with Chris Arm's most popular firearm. There is no denying that this gun has a lot of popularity thanks to movies, games, and other media. But as for someone like me, I care more about practicality and performance more than the real firearm's popularity. Even I will say, despite my love for my ICS Gleals, that they can suck in many ways. No f***ing midcaps available. As I've made apparent over and over again, a gun can look great, have a nice box and graphics all over the place, or have licensed trademarks, but that means nothing if the performance can't stand apart or at least be on par with other options out there, especially if the alternatives can be had for far less. So let's start off with the Crytac Vector's controls and build quality. Well, it feels like a high-end gun, like it should for the price that it demands. The entire receiver area from the upper to the lower is polymer, like it should be, but at first, I could have sworn that it was made from metal. The guys at Crytac really did a great job with this body of this gun. What's polymer on this replica is made well, and the parts that are made from metal, like the top rail and the rear sling loop that's under the Gen 2 stock, are rock solid. Starting at the barrel's end, we have a plastic defines flash hider that can be found on most Crytac M4s, which sits on a metal barrel with 14mm counterclockwise threads underneath, so you can add on just about any common barrel extension or suppressor you have. Moving back to the handguard area though, we have quite a bit going on over here, but if I can sum it up, metal top rail, metal lower rail, you've got points on each side of the vector to add that included metal rail that you got from the box, and of course you have the very large charging handle and bolt release. Despite these two parts being made from metal, these serve no real purpose. In honesty, you don't need this charging handle at all, especially since the rotary hop-up dial is technically exposed at all times. The only protection you get is this polymer door that will flip up when you pull the charging handle back, 
but you could always just flip the door up yourself without any resistance. Up top, as you can see, we get a pair of polymer defiance license style flip up iron sights, which are once again pretty nice. The sight picture is clean with these, and you get some adjustability in regards to windage and elevation, as well as an optional aperture on the rear sight. But if you don't like these at all, then they're really easy to remove so you can replace them with whatever irons you have or any other optic you have. If I haven't mentioned yet, Crytek is the airsoft branch of Chris, the company who produces the real vector. So if anyone was going to make this gun amazing, then you'd imagine it would be them. And those expectations roll into the stock, which is the Gen 2 of the original vector stock. This stock bears a lighter format than the original one with lightning grooves throughout, while at the same time having that metal sling loop underneath I mentioned earlier as well as having the option to be adjusted by a couple inches out with an allen wrench as this butt pad can be extended. The pad itself is rubberized and fit my shoulder well, however if you do want the stock gone or replaced with something else that's compatible with this layout, then you'll find it to be really easy to remove. Just remove this pin and the stock comes right off. It's that easy. Just like how easy it is to fold the stock into the body with just the push of one button. While extended though, this stock is solid. I had just a little bit of play up and down, but Besides that, this stock was pretty much flawless. So let's continue along where the Vector really shows its strengths. Man, you better say the Vector's perfect. Well, the Vector is a weird beast to get used to. Good thing it's completely ambidextrous apart from the magazine release because that will be one less thing you'll have to get used to. I've only messed with the vector layout a handful of times before I filmed this review, so I felt like an idiot trying to flip the selector switches quickly or accidentally flipping the gun to safe when I didn't mean to. The switches... Oh, they feel nice. You can't miss the selectors and the safety switch doubles as a spring decompressor. And remember when I was doing that thunderstorm gameplay at D14 when that one guy's gun shorted out and began to run away on full auto in the safe zone? Well, if that were to have happened to this Crytac Vector, then I could just simply switch it to safe and bam, no more runaway. Because when you flip the Crytac Vector into safe mode, the trigger is disconnected from the rest of the electronics. I really like that. It's, it's little stuff like that which makes the $450 price tag more reasonable. I'm not going to oversell it though. I know how people think that price is still crazy, especially to some of those who have reviewed this gun already who weren't too happy about the price tag when it was announced. So the selectors are good, the trigger is decent, and the magazine release drops mags freely, so what annoys me about this gun? Well, there's no way around it. Battery storage is pretty cramped, but you can still fit a 7.4 tricell in this pistol grip with some work, so it's not all that bad but I still found myself thinking that I'd probably just tape my battery in place instead of bothering with the wires when I have little time to get into the next game because no, we're not waiting for you to get your battery into your gun and we're not waiting for your friends to defog their cheap Amazon bot eye protection. But here's a pro tip that I was given by a Crytek Vector owner. If you switch to small type connections to Dean's connections, then you can fit a 11.1 tricell pretty easily. Aesthetically, this gun looks great. Even if you only slightly like the Vector, you can still admit that Crytek made this look good. All the selection molds are painted, the serial number and Chris Vector trademarks are clear, and not rushed along like many other guns in this model's price range. But the trigger... The trigger is kinda weird, I at first didn't like it too much. I knew there was a micro switch behind it, but I had a hard time doing that speedball trigger thing that you see me doing in the shooting portions, you know where I use my middle finger. I usually do that to just show you guys how fast I can shoot the trigger without any problems. That was kind of a difficult thing to do with this gun. You need to learn where the trigger breaks on semi so you can really put those uh, fast semi-auto shots down. But after I went back to it and learned where the trigger breaks, I got more of a hang of it. I did get half rotations now and then which were pretty annoying and I felt like I was using a Febreze bottle when trying to spam two round burst. But if you can take a minute to learn how the trigger works then you'll be fine. Just know that one of the common upgrades that are made to these SMGs is an upgrade to the trigger assembly. Truthfully, I don't have much to hate on here. I'd want one of these guns myself. This gun isn't bulletproof from criticism however, not by a long shot. It only took me a few minutes to get quotes like these while at D14 and from random customers at the GI Tactical Plano store, but a lot of these comments can be pretty objective and biased. I don't like it. Everything is proprietary. They make a gun already that does everything that this does, which takes M4 magazines, the PDW, and it's cheaper. All controls are very good, 
but you'll have to get used to them, like the real thing. But the Mach Bolt is probably the most lackluster of all airsoft, right there next to the old Echo 1 Spectres. I like it for the looks, but for $450, I'd look somewhere else for a beginner. I've learned already to not buy something just because it looks good. You're spending $450 to pay for the licensing. I'd just buy a Scorpion Evo for that money. To me, you're kind of paying $450 to have the look at me everyone gun. You're the guy that shows up to a car meet with an old gen Lancer Evo who only modded the muffler and threw on more stickers than what you would see in the first Fast and the Furious. You better get it home before your mom comes home from your aunt's house. But that's not always a bad thing, like how some of the cars from that first movie will never lose the love they received way back then. Okay, I'll stop with all the car references now. Inside, any tech that's willing to break this gun down will find a proprietary 8mm gearbox that's exclusive to the Vector, a quick chain spring system, a Crytek 30K high torque short type motor, a padded cylinder head, a relief cut cylinder window, and a 155mm inner barrel that you'd also find in the Crytek PDW. With that rotary style hop up with the numbered dial that will click as you adjust it connected. And all that info comes from the Crytek website itself. With that hop up and the barrel, and of course some 0.25 gram BBs at the range, I was seeing about 150 feet even on a slightly windy day. So right away, that's good range with something with such a small barrel setup. And since the chronograph gave me these sub CQB legal readings with 0.2 gram BBs, I can approve this gun for CQB use. So it's pretty good at range. The FPS is low enough for CQB, the vector is way up there in the cool factor, and you get a lot of electronic goodies like the MOSFET inside for two round burst, the electronic trigger disconnect, and the spring release. But is it practical? Well, starting off with the price, this package will cost you $450, as I've mentioned half a dozen times now, and you'll only get one magazine with the purchase unless you got the pre-order ones, so you would get two magazines with those, so you'll need to pick up another magazine sooner or later for $25 more dollars. So that will mount up to a pretty staggering bill after a while. The buffer tube stock adapter will also run you another $60 if you want to get one of those. However, with the ambi controls, anyone can use the vector. The build quality should last you quite a while as well, since nothing rattles or feels cheap on this gun. If that sounds like it's worth the price or not is up to you guys. I mean, after all, the Crytek LMG is about $500, but I never hear anybody complaining about that, and I see them all the time wherever I travel. Heck, one of those sold to this gentleman right here as I was reviewing this Vector. He actually wanted to buy the Vector I was reviewing, but decided to only go with the LMG at first. But it's your money, so let me know what you think. I'm going to be a little biased here since I want one of these myself, so this is where you guys come into play and where some of you guys might have a few more pros and cons that I didn't list here. So let me see those comments down below. I want this gun for how different it is. Yes, the price of running it will be a bit annoying at first, but then again, no unique gun has ever been cheap for me. Like, I mean, a set of six ICS Galil high caps will cost me $180. And that's already been really annoying, but that's just what I have to do. So with that, I hope you enjoyed my review. I love to read your comments, thoughts, and opinions. I'd like to thank the Notification Squad and Airsoft GI for sponsoring this video. And of course, I want to thank the first, well, I guess 500 people that end up liking this video. I say 500 now because you guys pass up 300 likes pretty quickly now. And all the support that comes from you guys really make these reviews worth every minute I spend editing them. But until the next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Holmbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Yeah, I know the battery is sticking out of the pistol grip, but it's the best I could do. Am I out? I'm out. Nice. Like it? That's awesome. That's you're, the best. You're actually going to buy that? Yeah. For sure. Well, that's the second gun I've reviewed and someone buys it right in the middle of the review. <laughs> I guess I'm doing a good job. You are. Great. Like that's awesome. You up? Liking it? I love it. So what do you think? It's awesome. It's... You like the vector, don't you? I do.
like I said, you gotta you gotta really get used to these controls. treat about the vector from Crytac is after you've already finished for a day you're you're done for a day and you want to just take your battery out and everything and put it away while you have the battery still in and you've already fired you can go ahead and throw it in safety and it will detention a spring so you won't lose any of that spring power later on in the day or just as you have it packaged up and you're not playing with it. Really cool feature about the Crytac Vector. So this is how that